Hi and welcome to the Magic Garden and this series of video blogs the Magic Garden and the Media 22 Tarot Cards. In this series we will introduce you to the inner landscape of the Magic Garden and the Media 22 Tarot Cards. I'm Jacob Moth and I'm the main creator of the Magic Garden. I'm a composer, musician, facilitator and author and throughout my entire life a dedicated psychonaut. For years I wanted to make these video blogs about the tarot cards of the Magic Garden. And to do this, I do it together with my good friend, Derek. I heard my name! <laughs> Welcome, Derek! <laughs> Lovely. So it's a pleasure to have you here yeah, to make these video blogs. Fantastic. This yeah. is Derek. Yeah, yeah, come up, Derek. <laughs> My name's Derek Seagriff. I've come from living in London to come to Scandinavia many, many years ago. And um, I first got introduced to the tarot when I was uh, in, uh, 17 years of age. And then I used the tarot, of course, to explore my, myself. And then I used it for my family and for my friends and for my clients. And that was uh, 50 years ago. And since then, I've been learning astrology via the tarot. And I also explored via the tarot cards the use of uh, exploring Kabbalah and the Tree of Life. So in fact, tarot has been an inspiration and a, ca and a great catalyst throughout my entire life and career. So it's with great pleasure that uh, Jakob and I offer this series of video blogs on the 22 major cards of the tarot. In the age of 17, I had a shamanic initiatory crisis which triggered a deep and powerful inner journey, an adventure of self-discovery. For many years I used the technologies of the sacred in safe environments with experienced sitters. After 11 years my quest culminated in a life-changing experience. During a powerful shamanic ritual I suddenly found myself catapulted out among the stars, galaxies flying in and out of white and black holes. And there I was contacted by a spiritual being, Goan Kuzu, who transmitted detailed information about how to build this place, the Magic Garden, as a cosmic space station, a modern grail castle, a modern temple, a place which connects the various levels of reality. The Magic Garden is a multidimensional artistic concept manifesting the emerging paradigm. It consists of several levels, ecosystems, creative building constructions, sculptures, modern audiovisual equipment and a broad and rich symbolism. A mythological landscape, so to speak. The small ecosystems has endangered species and the building constructions are of course built as sustainable as possible. The studio is powered by solar panels and our goal is to run the Magic Garden 100% by sustainable energy. The multidimensional artistic concepts also includes books, a musical cosmology, the Lila Rose Odyssey with 11 albums, and a planned film and TV series. My book, Land of the Nocturnal Butterfly, and several albums from the cosmology are available. All in all, we are seeking to manifest a complete microcosm which integrates and includes humanity's total pool of experience. The whole spectrum from quantum physics to spirituality and mysticism. Thereby, the Magic Garden is also a cartography of the Psyche. Are you ready to begin your journey? On a daily basis, the Magic Garden has four major functions. One, it is a music and film studio. Two, the round hall is optimized for live streaming and is used for concerts, lectures, workshops and the like. Three, occasionally companies or small groups use the facilities to get inspiration. Four, it functions as a cosmic space station, a place to enter non-ordinary states of consciousness and thereby undergo deep psychospiritual transformation. An important note about the last 
but perhaps most important function of the place as a cosmic space station. So Stanislav Gore found a new term for these non-ordinary states of consciousness, or more specific, a subcategory of these states for which he coined a new term, holotropic. The word holotropic means literally oriented towards wholeness, from the Greek word holos means whole and trepin means moving towards or in direction of something. These are states that novice shamans experience during the initiatory crisis and later induce in their clients. Ancient and native cultures have used these states in which they passage and in healing ceremonies. They were described by mystics of all age and initiates in the ancient mysteries of death and rebirth. Procedures inducing these states were also developed in this context of the great religions of the world, Hinduism, Buddhism, Taoism, Islam and Christianity. I really like this term, holotropic state of consciousness, as it points to the essence of what the Magic Garden is about, to undergo a deep psycho-spiritual transformation which ultimately frees us from the illusion of being separated beings and access the state of oneness. And this experience of oneness is the Magic Garden's vision, to create cohesion between people, no matter who we are, how we are and what we believe. These two properties, transformation and oneness, is expressed in the Magic Garden's two logos. The butterfly symbol is the ancient symbol of transformation, death and rebirth, and a symbol of the soul. I will explain this symbol more in the video blog about tarot card number 10, the Wheel of Fortune. Oneness is expressed in this mandala, showing the different path to the source. I will explain this mandala more in the video blog about the tarot card number one, the magician. So how do we make this transformation from experiencing ourselves being separated from others and natures? The state of mind which Alan Watts called the skin encapsulated ego to the experience of oneness. This is what the path through the 22 major tarot cards is about. The 22 main tarot cards, also called the Major Arcana, symbolizes the most significant archetypes of the universe, the basic building blocks, or the big ideas, as Plato called them. It is a collectively inherited unconscious idea, pattern of thought, image, etc., that is universally present in individual psyches, as in Jungian psychology, such as the Hermit, the Death, and the Great Mother. These 22 cards and the way they are located in the Magic Garden show the progression from childhood to enlightenment. We will emphasize that the tarot cards function as mirrors of our own subconscious and higher consciousness and that they can be interpreted in various ways. Here in the Magic Garden, each of the 22 tarot cards is placed together with other building constructions, a room, a sculpture or a place in the garden which manifests the archetypal energy. So we will use this platform for our interpretation and we do this with the best intention to give you some ideas how to work with yourself and these powerful tools. Through these video blogs I will explain how these cards are interconnected with the location, sculptures, artwork and building constructions. I will present the archetypes as I experience them and through the complete vision to the place as a whole. I will present the teachings and essence of the meaning from my and the Magic Garden's point of view. I will explore the possibility to combine the cards with the various states of consciousness experienced in powerful philotropic states of consciousness. As I have done extensive self-exploration, the Magic Garden is based on experiences from my own inner journey, which I have described in my book, Landing Nocturnal Butterfly. And so we come to this wonderful tarot. What is tarot? Well, let's take the word itself. Tarot from the word tarot, meaning the wheel. And the cards are indeed a wheel of life, showing us movement, cycles, movement, energies, dynamics. 
The tarot cards have risen in popularity over the last 30 years to become the most used form of divination. Divination, a word meaning to look at the will of the gods. <clears throat> so often in the general public's mind, you know, tarot is associated with, with what we call prediction or fortune telling. Uh, but tarot's not actually about fortune telling because it's not about telling people what to do. Uh, if we do that, or if I do that, it's like taking power away from the client. Right? But tarot can absolutely help you to focus upon possibilities, potentials, probabilities. So then it becomes a tool to guide us. And in used in that way, this is a very, very valuable contribution to our awareness. So, fortune telling versus life guidance. Tarot is often misrepresented because of the significance of tarot in, within the mystery traditions of the West. The images of the cards have great significance as icons for meditative reflection and as keys to unlock the creative potential within, within each of us. These sacred icons provide the means with which to navigate the hidden realms of the unconscious, explore the landscapes of the mind, navigate the hidden realms of the unconscious, creating links. Symbols always create links between the inner and the outer worlds. This is its initiatory function. The tarot is primarily a vehicle for initiation. That's what it was originally produced for. It is the means of divination is a secondary role. So what do we mean by initiation? Well, initiation is simply a word that means to begin, to enter into something. So tarot is both a psychic mirror and a multifaceted symbol system. Symbols train us and help us to develop the intuition. The tarot cards can be looked upon as an amazing book of wisdom without written words. They are silent, but they bring vast volumes of enlightenment in symbolic form and they express archetypal characteristics, an ancient understanding of the mysteries and purposes of life. So each tarot card, we are working in the Magic Garden with 22, the, what we call the major cards. There are 56 smaller cards, making a total of 78 cards. Well, 78 cards is quite a big mouthful to take in these video blogs, so we're going to narrow it down to the 22 major cards. And the major cards are what we call trumps. They're called trumps because they triumph over all the other cards. It's a bit like saying, this is the hour hand of a clock, the major cards. This is the minute hand of the clock, the minor cards. It's a difference between soul activity and everyday personality activity. So the minor cards are definitely used for everyday movements, and information, but the major cards have this initiatory function. So these archetypal images, they have guidance for us, advice and insights, but they throw open the doors of the inner world of the psyche and bring us onto the path of initiation. The images and ideas presented through the tarot will serve to initiate, to create change within us, a realization, a moment in which we learn a personal truth. So we are not being presented with a ready-made dogma and we are not expected to be obedient to an authority outside of us. We are instead taken into ourselves. We are put in touch with the inner life, our inner feeling life, our thoughts and our values. We are given, when we use the tarot, the opportunity to grow as a spiritual being. And initiation is not one event, but an ongoing process of unfolding events, as you will experience as we move through this landscape and look at each of the 22 major cards in the Magic Garden.
We'll be using the Arthur Waite deck, one of the most popular decks in, in the last century and a half. Uh, Arthur Waite designed his deck to portray this magical philosophy. He wrote, the tarot embodies symbolical presentations of universal ideas, and it is in this sense that they contain secret doctrine. So in other words, the tarot images express a very practical spiritual philosophy. And the initiation path begins with this understanding. The sacred icons of the tarot form a key aspect to mystery school teachings. They're doorways leading into the realm of the ageless wisdom. This is the deeper gift of the tarot. So studying the tarot is not a matter of just memorizing lots of information and their meanings, but it's actually attunement with the sacred symbols, which then have an enormous impact on our DNA circuitry. It starts to move energies within us, and this is something that propels us into a process of dynamic change. This is the essence of initiation. This is the way of the tarot, and this is the way of the mystery school. A seeker in the wasteland wide, I seek for truth on every side. I journey north, south, east and west to find the object of my quest.